Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. You know things are going absolutely awesome. Oh, I was just about to say not a single person has signed in yet, but now the numbers are starting. <laughs> a couple of people are watching us. I was thinking, it's a Friday night. What on earth are you doing at home? Get out about on the town. But hey, if you're going to join us, then um, at least you can say we got the intro right this time. We didn't balls it up like we did last week. <laughs> How embarrassment. And uh, it's all very, very exciting. Now, but before I get too far into it, Got to welcome my co-hosts, Jeffro and MPS Lads. How are we tonight? Oh, all good, dude. How are you? You know, one of the topics I was going to bring up, pluck this out of a... Ra- There's no rabbits in this house. Pluck this out of a hat. I don't even have a hat. Um, one of the things we never discussed in this show, and even though we're supposed to discuss, is fantasy movies. And I'm not talking about Final Fantasy, which is what Colin brought up earlier. Uh, fantasy movies. And I was actually... X many years ago, I would have said to you, what do you think is the best fantasy film ever made? Just straight off the top of your head. Uh, but the one I thought of has sort of been superseded since then. But um, uh, without thinking too hard about it, are there any fantasy movies that uh, you guys go, you know what, that was top of the pops? Because there is one absolute standout that no one ever thinks of. But uh, I'll pass over you two first. MPS, you can go first. If you don't know anything, you can pass over to Jeffro. Uh, uh, look, I think the the, the biggest fantasy film Film, and I'm going to go series here, was Lord of the Rings when it came out. That's the exactly. original three. Okay, they were brilliant. Now, I never read the books. Uh, I'm not a book person. Uh, I need books with pictures, so comic books essentially more so than novels. But the cinematography, the way it all played out, then you had this, the extra long releases on DVD. It was brilliant back in the day and still something I would love to watch again. Very cool. And I like it. People are now popping in all these things like Labyrinth and Dragon Slayer. And it's like, we've just uncorked the genie. How good is that? You know, Jeffro, quickly, what do you, uh, what would uh, be at the top of your list? Um, I was going to say Xanadu, but uh, that's not really <laughs> here or there. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Actually, actually, Jeffro, Jeffro, have you heard the, uh, the, the version of Xanadu done by Bob Down? Oh, no. I know who Bob Down oh. is, but I. It is, it is brilliant. If you like the original, you're going to love this. If you ever want to just remember like it was the 70s, go and listen to that. It's a fantastic song. Very good. Otherwise, right. I mean, the 80s was really good for fantasy uh, movies. I mean, your Dark Crystal, your Labyrinth, uh, your Never Ending Story, uh, all those sort of movies uh, really sort of uh, are very 80-centric. Because... There is one fantasy film. I used to ask people this question. You know what? This is. I agree with you. I think Lord of the Rings takes the cake. The three movies you can't beat them, right? But there was prior to that. I used to ask people, "What do you think of the best fantasy film movie, movies ever made?" And as like Jeff I said, you know, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, this that. And there's one that everybody forgot about, completely forgot, right? And I said, "No, clearly the best fantasy film ever made was The Wizard of Oz." I was going to say Wizards by Ralph Batsky, but. Uh, you idiot. You idiot. That's a science fiction movie, not a film. It's got fancy elements. But Wizard of Oz, right, is by far the best sci- uh, fantasy film made up until Lord of the Rings, in my opinion, because that is true fantasy. You know, you go to a completely mystical place and you've got your dog and your bloody scarecrows and all this other stuff going on and the songs and music, and it captivated an entire generation of people and made um, Judy Garland an absolute superstar. And no one ever thought of it because it was so far back. But uh, there you go. But uh, I thought I'd just chuck that in. Um, Peter Jordan, he said, yeah, Excalibur, yeah, good on you. Yeah, Wizards of Oz, yeah, someone else is agreeing with me. See, Wizard of Oz, absolutely fantastic. Not so much the, um, the Wiz. What? Yeah, not the Wiz. Oh, no. Not the Wiz. That was... I'm a big fan of the Wiz. Love yeah, the Wiz. Yeah. Soundtrack. <laughs> Blue I'll tell you Ray. what, just, like, we've been sitting here so long I could go, go, go for a whiz. Um, and, of course, not, <laughs> and not the <laughs> awards. You can give that a miss as well. So uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Someone has said it was the best musical fantasy up till The Hobbit. Was it The Hobbit a musical fantasy, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Tracy brought up, I know you guys brought it up before, Never Ending Story. It never, in, I don't think I saw the second and the third sequels because it should just go on forever if it's never ending if you think about it. Actually, two sequels I knew, later. Yeah, sorry, go, sorry, MPS, I cut uh, you off. Man. Yeah. I was going to say two sequels later, and it stopped. Yeah, and they changed the the dude. I knew a friend of mine who saw the Neverending Story, and he was so traumatized by the fact that the horse died 
you know, the horse gets stuck in the mud and it dies, right? He just sinks and dies. He refused to watch the rest of the film. And even as an adult, because he saw it as a kid, as an adult, he flatly could not watch it. You know, it was just like, no, that was just really traumatic for him. So, uh, uh, but yeah, New Running Story was actually interesting because it was made in Germany. So it was actually a German production, not a Hollywood production. And for that reason, it just looked absolutely awesome. So Wolfgang Peterson. So uh, very cool. Uh, there was one that came up here. Uh, Willow. Oh, you can't beat Willow. Bloody Lucasfilm production with Ron Howard directing. Absolutely awesome. And I can say with absolute, like, looking straight at the camera, I have actually worn General Kale's helmet for real and held his sword. So, and I'll tell you what, I was the coolest cat in town when I did that. So, uh, but Willow is an excellent movie. Really, really good. Still holds up even today. So, even if some of the, digital, the visual effects are a bit iffy. So, uh, Princess Bride. Yeah, that was a very popular one, wasn't it? Everybody had the Montoya thing and his six fingers and... Well, that's sort of business. Good old Andre the Giant. Jeffro, that's right up your alley, old son. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, there was reports off the film set just couldn't have been more complimentary to uh, Andre the Giant. You know, such a, a beautiful man, uh, you know, a very uh, funny person and uh, just a gentle giant, as they, uh, they say. It's cliche, but with uh, Andre, it was very much true. Yeah, it's funny because you see him in the movie and you expect him just to be this big growling grunt and he actually speaks really softly and really nicely. So uh, it was really quite good. Yeah, the Swamp of Sadness, that's what Daniel said. So, uh, yeah, I agree. That's, that's a fast-forward moment on the video. So uh, uh, very good. Yeah, it's good old, um, yeah, just reading what oh, people yeah. oh, Messages Lady are coming through quick and fast. So, what? Lady Hawk. Oh. Lady Hawk. It's for Sally. Yeah, brilliant film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelf that was in the heydays. Yeah, I knew a lot of girls who were really into Lady Hawk because of the romantic thing, you know. Uh, you know, it's like they're about to touch it. He's about, oh, he's turned into a freaking hawk, and she's turned into a blah 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 and whatever else. And uh, uh, and he had his head. I think he had the what do you call it, the crossbow that could shoot multiple doodads or something, you know, um, arrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes a doodad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, PJ said Beastmaster. Oh yes, if you want a, a really funky. Large cat, just get a tiger and paint it black. <laughs> uh, Isn't that called a panther? No, they couldn't use one. They actually, it actually got a tiger and spray painted it black. I was like, why couldn't you? Why couldn't you just use a panther? Uh, like, uh, anyway, so I like, um, I like crawl. You guys suggested that. That's a good one. Yeah, good old crawl. The horses in the sky with their flames coming under the hooves. You know, um, there was a lot of dodgy ones coming out in that time. But uh, um, actually, Beastmaster, if I recall, had Mark Singer who was uh, in V. So yeah. uh, that's very cool. Tell you what, we've unwake we've woken up a sleeping Andre the Giant effect. Look at all the messages coming through. People are just going off the. Do nothing. you guys remember the TV series Beauty and the Beast with Linda Hamilton and Ron yeah. Perlman? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a beautiful sort of story told, and she looked awesome in that. And he was a nice, you know, he was the big beast sort of thing. That was great. I loved that. So, yeah. I don't. Is that on DVD, Jeffrey? Do you know? Oh, absolutely. Yep, it's in my collection. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got to hunt it down there. The problem with the only, the only issue you could argue with is that you see the Beast and Beauty and the Beast in the TV series, and, I mean, he's obviously the alien, the alien, whatever, but he almost looks like you just want to hug the guy. It's not like he's like uh, Ozimoto or the Phantom of the Opera. He's not, like, really horrific or frightening. And I guess there's an argument of saying, well, it might be called Beast, but if it's actually like, oh, you think, oh, you just want to go and pat him and stroke him and play with his fur or whatever, it kind of loses the impact to a large degree, I think. So uh, I think it would be good if he really was beastly. So there you go. He had a really good uh, mane of hair, so he could have done really well in a uh, 80s hair band. So, uh, <laughs> Someone has said Clash of the Titans. Uh, now, um, yes, the original version from 82, I think it was. Uh, good old Ray Harryhausen at his absolute best. Um, there you go. For Now, here's a trivia question for you, Jeff. What was the name of the owl? NPS won't know this, so I'm going to ask you. The oh, little metallic owl. Uh, um, it was a metallic owl. Yep. And um, I've got a blank. I could have named you Harry Hamlin as the <laughs> uh, as the, the lead in it, but uh, I can't remember. No, because actually the actually owl appears in the remake movie just briefly, and they go, "What's this? Oh, it's a piece of crap. Throw it away." Uh, and uh, it's called Bubo. So there you go. Bubo. Thank you. I, I never saw the uh, the remake. I was too scared to actually um, give it two hours of my time. Oh yeah. Oh mate. Now, PJ. PJ I'm, got we both. Yeah. I'm going to throw you guys back a bit. Ulysses. If you remember? Oh, oh sorry. And Jason and the Argonauts. That yeah. was that was. A, I love Jason and the Argonauts. That's that stop motion sort of stuff. It's a bit cheesy, but you know, for back in the whenever that was made, that was great. 
yeah, well, that's who had the fighting skeletons, the skeletons fighting the dudes. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was just like revolutionary back then. It's like, that's very, very cool. Um, one of the films that I remember in 1977 was Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. And what was yeah. significant about that is that I believe, if I remember correctly, Peter Mayhew played the Minotaur in that. He doesn't have any lines. He's just like, you know. He did. Yeah, he yeah. absolutely did. Because I know that um, our mutual friend, Glenn, uh, tried to hunt down a still of that so he could get Peter Mayhew to sign it. Because his yeah. idea was like, uh, everyone was giving him Star Wars photographs, like, here, sign this. And, yeah. you know, like win some brownie points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Collins mentioned Dragon Slayer. Now, here we go. From a visual effects point of view, what was unique about Dragon Slayer? MPS, do you have any ideas? I'm not sure if I've actually seen it, to be honest. Now okay. I think about it. That's cool. Uh, hey, Jeff Rowe, from a visual effects point of view, there's something revolutionary about Dragon Slayer. It actually revolutionized the industry. What was well, it? I know, I know it was made uh, in the UK, so uh, maybe there's something about the uh, the effects artists in the UK that sort of made it stand out. Um, no. I haven't seen it since the 80s, honestly. Okay. Now, the thing about the movie, for those who've never seen it, uh, the dragon doesn't appear until the very end, right? But it was the very first time they ever used the technique go motion. So you had stop motion where you move an object one frame at a time, but they actually used go motion where the thing could actually be moved at real real speed. Uh, and then, of course, they adopted that technique in Return of the Jedi, which came out the following year. So it was actually the first time they ever used go motion. So when you see the dragon in Dragon Slayer, that's freaking awesome. Absolutely grouse because it looks like it's a real moving thing. You get the blur and all that as it moves along. So there you go. How about that? I think I don't know if ILM did that, but um, yeah, yeah, that was absolutely revolutionary. Um, when it comes to dragons, uh, so you got dragons. The dragon in Dragon Slayer was, which as I said, only appears at the end. But if you go to Reign of Fire, which has dragons in it, the dragons in Reign of Fire, and if you remember with Christian Bale and um, the other dude, I can't think of his name, all some. They were absolutely magnificent. Do you guys ever remember Rain of Fire at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was fun. Yeah. I mean, you have the castle. Do you actually remember the sequence when they're actually doing the replication of um, the scene from uh, Empire Strikes Back when Vader cuts off Luke's hand and they're doing a bit of a pantomime for the little kids? Oh, and yeah. He oh, tends yeah. to get his hand off the kids go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Daniel's going to say this thing, they're not dragons. It's like, yeah, right, I do. You're going to say they're uh, gargoyles or some other bloody things. I think you'll find, as a general rule, that they uh, probably are dragons, but you can call up whatever facts and figures you want. It was a fictitious movie, dude, so make of that what you will. So, And in the movie, they call them dragons, so there you go. But there's a grouse sequence when the big male dragon gets on top of the castle where all the people are living inside and just because you know, all the flames come out of his mouth and it just blows it in. It just oh, toasts the entire thing. Very, very cool. Matthew McConaughey playing a very unusually uh, yeah. uh, different role. So there you go. Something, so there you go. Something that he, I don't think he, he. I don't think he said. All right, all right, all right. In that one, did he? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I like what Daniel's he's got. The, he's got not in uppercase characters and everything. He's got a real thing. Oh, here we go. Look at that. <laughs> so, um, whatever, kids. It's just, it's only a movie. <laughs> of course. Hey, Dan, Daniel said they're waving. Watch it like this. They're waving. <laughs> They're waving, yeah, they're waving, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll split hairs on this stuff later on. So uh, Dragonheart, mm. um, that doesn't ring a bell. I, ne I don't know if I ever saw Sean it. You would have Connery, I think, was the voice of the dragon. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there was, yeah, it was Dragonheart, yeah, because the dragon didn't really look like a traditional dragon, did it? Whereas in Dragon Slayer and Reign of Fire, they sort of did, so... Uh, yeah, anyway, so very, very cool. So, But a lot of good fantasy movies. Like like your sword and sorcery movies of the 80s, which went straight to video. You know, you've got big hulky dudes and naked women everywhere. And it's just like, yep, yeah, that's just got to be class all the way. Actually, that'd be like your Conan movies. They'd be class as fantasy, wouldn't they? Barbarian and Destroyer and Red Sonja and all that crap. Yeah? Yeah, which were mentioned yeah. by someone a little while back. Oh, yeah, uh, right so there you go. Oh, here we go. Dragons have four legs. Really? We, you find a dragon for me, Daniel, and you count the legs on it. Because I went right in front of me, just like... <laughs> Jeez. Four, legs, four legs or four limbs, because technically a lot of dragons have two little arms and two big legs. They're sort of... They, yeah, they're like the T-Rex sort of thing. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I class, I've classed King Kong as, as fantasy as well. Yeah, Godzilla, suppose. yeah. Uh, okay. Well... Well, sci-fi fantasy in terms yeah. of that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly right. But uh, um, 
Oh, I was going to say, but uh, yeah, so the whole Conan, that started the whole thing of the what, the sorcerer's age type thing and, you know, medieval times and whatever else. And yeah, it was a very, very popular sort of era back then with James Earl Jones, of course, being in the first movie. So not exactly my cup of tea, but uh, a lot of people really got into it. So yeah, good on them. So. They, were, they were Arnie's first sort of uh, feature films, essentially, because he had the muscles, he looked... He had the look and all that sort of stuff. So, but I don't think, for memory, I, I think his voice was overdubbed in one of them, if not the first one. For memory, yeah. very cool. I like Michelle's comments. You know, Chinese dragons can have hundreds of legs. So back at you, Daniel. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> so, oh, he started this conversation seriously. So, uh, <laughs> and the worst part is, what's funny is our numbers of viewers have actually sort of hovered around the 17, 18 mark. So people are still hanging around listening to us crap on about this stuff. <laughs> great this 2020 dragon debate. Oh, uh, golly. Yeah, I know. Imagine sitting there and having a rule like getting right right into it. It's like, oh, it's a dragon. It's not a dragon. It's a wyvern. It's this, it's that. Actually, Lego, the Lego dragons all have four legs. But they're too little, too big. So, <laughs> yeah, I still think it was a good movie. So, uh, you know, it's it's all good. Whatever, you know, it's like unicorns. That's right. I oh, know. Hang on. What do you call it? The yeah, unicorns. Yeah, unicorn. Some people yeah. say if you get a horse and stick a horn on it, it's a unicorn. And other people say no, no, no. It's not meant to look like an actual horse and not like Legend. You know, Legend. Legend was an excellent movie regarding having unicorns in it because they put the horn on. It looks absolutely fantastic. Bright, bright white horses. And some people said, oh, yeah, but they're not meant to look like real horses. Like, oh, Jesus, just get over it. So, uh, but Legend was a very, very cool movie uh, that actually really looked like fantasy. And, of course, Tom Cruise, one of his earliest roles. So uh, there you go. Playing Jack, ironically, was the name of his character. So, um, And you guys remember Legend at all? Uh, I didn't no. really watch it. No. Don't remember it. Yeah. It had two soundtracks, uh, one by Jerry Goldsmith and one by Tangerine Dream, if you remember. Jeff, I would know that one. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it had a really, it was a Ridley Scott film. So absolutely beautiful looking film, but yeah, the unicorns and that, I don't know how they got those horns to stay on those horses, but Jesus, they, they, they look fantastic. So bit of glue. And, and in the, in the time that I was trying to break, you know, get into having a chat with you about this ads has come through with unicorns are just skinny rhinos. And I was trying to go the other way around. So. Um, I love this comment from Michelle. So what's the definition of fantasy? I reckon Daniel's opinions are fantasy. <laughs> Page and just changing it so the answer is actually. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. What was that, man? Yeah, I'm just thinking, Daniel's going to be going to the Wikipedia page under the definition of what a, a dragon is and just changing it to exactly what he wants it. So, right. <laughs> there we shall like that one well. <laughs> oh, golly. I, I always love the fact that people argue about things that are completely fictitious. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <look at> that. <laughs> Harry Potter. What about Harry oh. Potter? That's a good fantasy movie. Oh, it's so bloody obvious, isn't it? Yeah, the Harry Potter series, that is all completely fantasy. So um, um you could devote an entire episode regarding as in a show like this, just devoted to Harry Potter. I mean, i it wasn't my cup of tea. I saw a couple of movies and they all looked the same to me and it just sort of like one melded into the other, but I uh, obviously had a very big following and a very good continuity between all the whole lot of them with the same actors, uh, you know, yeah, with the same leads and concepts. So, uh, no, well done to that. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, I, but I have no real comment. I don't know if you, either of you two want to say anything about the Harry Potter, Harry Potter movies. I, I wouldn't class them necessarily as fantasy, but more magical in terms no. of a slightly different genre. Um, yeah, there's a bit of fantasy, but it's for me, it's more because they use a lot more magic in it rather than um, than it sort of being like the traditional sort of fantasy films. But it could very well fit into that genre. I, I didn't mind them. I've seen most of them. And it's interesting to watch the kids get older as they go along because they did a, a movie pretty much every year for, for six or seven years, whatever it was. And uh, you look at them now and you go, hang on a second, this started back in the early 2000s and now they're adults and you go mm. holy cow where did the time go mm. yeah 
Uh, it's a very good adaptation. Like, it's very funny. Like, we're discussing earlier the Lord of the Rings and the, the, the three movies were outstanding. And then, of course, they did the trilogy of the Hobbit movies, which, of course, a lot of people who know the Hobbit book go, well, it's a very thin book. How do you stretch it out to three films? And in the end, because they were um, the three original movies were so good, that was like a, so almost an impossible ask to try and replicate that quality and that standard. And as a result, the Hobbit film sort of just tanked a bit. It really just sort of dragged out. You know, there's big ass battles here and whatever else. Yeah, yeah, we've seen this before. So it's very unfortunate that it ended up being that way. Maybe in hindsight, two movies at least, or maybe uh, even cut it down to one. But uh, yeah, it must be a bit of a disappointing thing when you're trying to make a trilogy and you get past your first movie into the second one, thinking, you know what, we're not really cutting the mustard as far as the quality of the other three. But uh, anyway, at least they did them, so uh, it is what it is. It'll be interesting yeah. to see what Netflix do with Lord of the Rings because they're adapting that to television. So the fact that we've seen it all before, it'll be interesting to see how different their version comes out. Good point. Actually, one of the things I completely forgot to mention, we mentioned Dark Crystal earlier, and, of course, you've got the TV series, Age of Resistance. Now, if you're a Dark Crystal fan, Age of Resistance was fantastic. Uh, I don't know, you probably didn't see it in PS, but, Jeffrey, you would have watched that, surely. Oh, absolutely. It was riveting. I mean, in in some ways, you couldn't get more faithful and uh, in, in many ways improving on the original because they used all the original um, uh, uh, practical effects, but they also incorporated uh, CG in there and the blend was so seamless, you would never know which ones were which. And that's, that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so here's a question then. So, because I haven't seen it, would you? Because I know the film is the sequel to the series. The series is the prequel. Should I watch the series first, then the film, or should I do the old-fashioned thing and watch the film first, then the series? No, I'd go with the film first, then the series, um, because otherwise you lose some of the impact in the movie. Because uh, you already say, well, I already know that this is what happens. So it's nice to get the surprise. So it's a little bit like the Star Wars prequels, where it's a bit like a history lesson, as to saying, well, this is how we got to this point here. In the dark crystal but if i want to know the history of it i'll go back and it's a series so they're actually planning i believe a second season of it um but it was just it's very rare to see a movie made in the 80s and a series made like three days ago where they've integrated everything so well you'd almost think they go side by side uh where as opposed to having the production quality be so radically different that it just feels foreign and as jeffro said that like even the voices and the costumes and the puppets and all the rest of it very ingenious and the um the the dedication to linking it up to the original material is so nice that uh yeah it's practically seamless and that's what uh makes it work so yeah definitely worth checking it out so there you go yeah so even michelle said film first so yeah absolutely yeah. uh melissa is one from tracy um maleficent yeah that's that would be a fantasy thing um yeah i don't know i have nothing really much to say about it. i don't know what you two think the uh, yeah then you would throw in you know the the other films that they did like uh hansel and gretel even though it's a bit more sort of older grungy sort of film with um oh i can't think of his name he played hawkeye in in avengers gerard Jeremy yeah, Jimmy renner Jeremy, yes him him too uh yeah so you got that you've got um yeah uh, him uh what was the other there was another film there was a Another Snow White sort of thing. Yeah, I'd probably class those as fantasy. Anything from Disney in oh, any Snow sort of White format. Yeah, Snow Sorry. White and the Huntsman. That's the other one with Hemsworth in it. Um, someone's mentioned Chronicles of Narnia. That was a good film, actually. I mean, the only yeah. if you could argue there's a downside to it, when they get into Narnia and there's a huge battle between the Queen's forces and the King's forces, the, I've forgotten the guy's name, um, and they've got all the animals and they're all fighting and carrying on. If Lord of the Rings had never existed... That stuff would be absolutely epic and just, oh, my God, we've never seen anything like this before. But because we had seen the stuff in Lord of the Rings, it's almost like, okay, we're just repeating the process. We're just using different characters on each side. But be that as it may, uh, yeah, that was actually a uh, particularly good um, film, Chronicle. Although, I mean, you get a bit sort of irked out, you know, when they go to sacrifice the lion. I've got his name. Um, Mustafa. No, it's not. Hang on, that's the Lion King, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever the line. Yeah, 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 because uh, Qui-Gon Jinn plays his voice. And uh, <laughs> I can't think of his freaking name. Someone's going to write it down here at some point. Uh, and... Call him Qui-Gon for the sake of it. Then you can get all the Thundercats fans going. 
yeah, yeah. So when they sacrifice the lion, it's like, yeah, that's probably one of the nastier parts of the movie. And you go, oh, yeah, I'm not really happy about that. But uh, um, the, the lady who played the, the queen, the evil queen, yeah, that was really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was good stuff. So, ah, Aslan, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, well done. I was getting there. <laughs> I would have got there eventually. <laughs> oh, golly, golly, golly. So, yes, very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so guess what, kids? It's now 10 o'clock. Uh, we've still got 15 people watching us. I can't believe that. Hasn't anybody got friends to visit? Golly, it's, cold outside. it's cold outside. They don't want to go out. They want to stay in where it's warm. Oh, Ange, the B Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bloody hell. That, I think, if I recall, uh, cost an absolute fortune to make that and got reviewed really yeah, really badly. Tilda Swinton, thank you very much. I'm glad people out there know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, yeah, Bunch Baron Munchausen, that was part uh, – Shit, who made that? It wasn't Terry Gilliam, was it, Jeffro? Terry Gilliam, yeah. Yeah, it was what? Terry Gilliam, yeah. Because he had, a, like, effectively a trilogy that, I think, Ice Pirates and something else that he did, he sort of made as a, a collection Time of the three. Bandits, you mean. Hey? Time Bandits, not um, Ice Pirates. Oh, thank you. I knew something, yeah, like that. So, But, uh, yeah, I've only ever seen Baron Munchausen once, a very big and opulent film, but uh, I don't think it all worked out well. So... Very good stuff. I can't believe we've Googled on for two hours and we've still got people watching us. So, um, oh, golly. So, uh, all right. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Absolutely fantastic. As Jeffro mentioned, not next Wednesday, the Wednesday after. Talk nerdy to me. We're back again next Wednesday as Boss Isley monthly for all your Star Wars stuff. So there you go. Anyway, Friday night's been good. Great, wonderful. But we've got to go out and visit people now. So uh, we'll leave you all to it. And remember, it's always important to stay nerdy. Stay okay. nerdy. Bye.